So I'm looking at burning Nintendo versus ROMs from start to finish. Um, basically, a versus game consists of three three parts, which is uh, the game data, which is held on two seven six four F ROMs, a CPU chip, which is interchangeable on on all the boards, and that's an RP two A zero three, and a PPU specific for the game. Now it's important to note that um, on a Unigame system, you can support one game because you've got one screen. On, on a dual system, you can support two game sets. Now, those game sets could be uh, the same game, um, such as games like Bloom Fight, which have simultaneous gameplay, or um, you can have completely two separate games on, on both screens. So if we have a look to see how that works, um, if I open the PPU list here, you'll see, for example, there's a game here versus baseball, and that is 12 Eproms, and is a two-player simulta simultaneous game on, on two monitors, and that uses an RP2C040001 chip. If I have a quick flick through on that PPU, you can see what other games uh, you can play. Some games require um, guns or daughter boards. Um, if we look at the second PPU, this is RP2C040002. Uh, you can see again, like versus ladies golf, uh, requires six EPROMs. Um, got here versus Mac Rider requires six six EPROMs. Um, we have a quick flip through the list. Next chip is the RP2 CO40003 chip. And again, games like This is Excite Bike uses six EPROMs. Um, the game we're actually looking at today is the RP2 CO40003 chip, which is a game um, that uh, I really like, versus Bloom Fight, and that has requires 12 EPROMs. And that is a two-player uh, simultaneous game on both monitors on a versus dual system. Um, I'll quickly flick through uh, the other PPU, so it's a 0004, the supported games. Uh, there's the RC2CO3B chip, and they're supported games. And we've got the 3C chip, supported games. And this is the RC2 CO501, and then 02, and 03, and 04. Okay, so if we have a look at the actual board itself, um, if I show you where the PPU, so the PPU is, is here, and if you were playing, if you were having two games on a, on a versus game system, you would have another PPU here. And like I said, the actual CPUs are interchangeable. And you have a CPU here and a CPU here. And the game data is actually stored here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six slots here. And if you look, you'll see um, there's corresponding letters and numbers. So for example, this one here is A1, 1A. And this one, 1B, 1C, 1D, 2A, 2B. Okay? So this is your, if you were playing um, on a uni system, then you would have basically your game data here, your PPU here, and your CPU here. If you have a dual system, you could have a game here, and you could also have a game here. So again, this is where your game data will go. There's your PPU, there's your CPU. Now, um, on, on the game Bloom Fight, uh, you basically have um, data on both sides because it's a, a versus games, uh, versus dual system game. Uh, so the, the game goes on both screens. So you'd have your first six EPROMs here, 
and your second set of six F problems here. So if you if you remember on the PPU list, we had um, a requirement for twelve F problems, so that's for both sides, and you would need a um, number three PPU here and a number three PPU here and an RP2AO3 CPU on both sides as well to play the game. Okay, so if I have a look at the data, I've downloaded this um, name ROM, Balloon Fight, for Versus System, and uh, if we open this up, you'll see that we have the RP2C04003 file which is the PPU and we've got then the game data so if you see how the game data is structured and, and uh, in this list here you've got 1A corresponds to the location here 1A, 1B, 1B, 1C, 1C, 1D, 1D, 2A, 2A, 2B, 2B and then we've got the second set of data here which is 6A, 6A, 6B, 6B, um, 6C, 6D, and then we've got 8A and 8B. So we need to burn these ROMs to fit into these locations. Okay. So uh, the chips that I'm actually using um, I've got a selection here, and uh, first one is the HN482764G-3 EPROM, and then I've got an MBM276430 chip, an M5LS2764K-2 chip, and a D2764D chip. Now, um, one of the important things to find out is whether your burner, your Epron burner, actually supports those chips. So I've got my manual here for the, for the uh, MicroMaster LV I'm using. I'll just minimize that a bit. We can then have a quick look to see if this burner supports the chips I'm interested in. So if we have a look uh, for and then we're looking for HN four eight two seven six four, and there you go. We've got the HN, which is an Attache four eight two seven six four G chip. So that's fine. Okay, so we can burn that. And then I'm looking for an MBN two seven six four. Shouldn't have any problems burning that either. Okay, and then we're looking for an M5 L2764K. It hasn't found anything, if we just take the K out. Oh. M5 L2764. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, and then the last one is a D2764. D2764. Okay, so we've got D2764. Okay. Right, so we've identified that the burner can write the ROMs. So what we need to do now is uh, we need to use an, a PROM eraser to delete the data that's currently on these EPROMs and then um, burn the data to them. So that's going to be the next step. Okay, so I've swapped over to using a, a video camera so we can see what's going on here. Um, so I've got all my, my chips lined up here and uh, you'll see that uh, the chips basically have a, on some of them have a, a window revealed and some have stickers across them. Um, 
uh, basically to blank them we need to reveal all of the all of the windows um, so we can put them in a prom eraser and basically flash a UV light through the windows to to blank all the chips so um, what I'll do now is just spend some time just removing all those stickers from each of the ROMs okay so I've removed all of the stickers as you can see there all the windows are now visible and um, I'm going to now put these in a prong eraser and uh, wipe all the data now what we could actually do uh, but I'm not going to do this now is um, we could actually put these ROMs in um, the programmer and actually verify um, if there's actually any data on these or whether they're actually blank already but uh, these have actually come off another board so I know that there would be data on here so I'm just basically going to, go into, uh, going to erase them all so we'll do that now. Okay so I've got my prom eraser here so what I'm going to do is uh, just power it on and uh, we're going to put all of the air problems that I took the stickers off before into this eraser. So I've just got them all here. Just pop them on top there. So first one going in, just basically put them in the spaces that are available. Just do that quickly. Like I said, basically what happens is um, we've revealed the window on the ROMs, and we're going to be this this device basically flashes or beams a UV light into the windows, um, and that erases the chip. Oh, I'm going to have enough. I'm not going to have enough space. Okay, so I've left two out there, but um, we've got a good selection there of, of ROMs to erase. Um, so I literally pop them in there. And what I usually do is set this to about 15 minutes, and that usually is long enough to um, to do the whole thing. So if I put this on. You'll see now the lights come on, and it says "raising." So um, we'll pop back in 15 minutes and uh, and see how we've got on. Right. So we've. We wait 15 minutes and um, I've removed the ROMs from the PROM eraser and uh, the first thing we can actually do is uh, if we put one of these chips and I'm going to select here the HN482764G-3 4G-3 chip and we can put it into the programmer open it first okay and if we load up the software it's not necessarily very easy for you to see here I'm um, unfortunately using Windows 2000 because this MicroMaster LV is a really old programmer and um, the software only seems to work on a Windows 2000 box or an MT box so I'm kind of stuck with this on a, an old Dell laptop. Anyway, um, so if we load up the software, first thing we need to do is um, select the correct chip type. So if we go to select device, um, I'll, I'll just basically tell you what's going on here because you can't really see it. Uh, there is a list of different tip, chip types. Um, so I'm now looking under under Hitachi, and I can see one there, HN482764G, which is exactly the chip that we're looking for. So if I accept that, okay. Right, and the next thing we need to do is then, I've got a copy of the balloon fight ROM, which I was showing you earlier on. So we have um, the files for 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 2A, 2B, 6A, 6B, 6C, 6D, 
8A and 8B, which obviously corresponds to um, the available um, slots or sockets on the PCB. So I'm going to write um, 2B, chip 2B, um, to this EPROM. But first what we'll do is we can actually have a look. If we go into um, the operation section of the programmer, uh, there is actually a section here uh, that is a blank check. So you can't really see that. I'll move the, move the camera a bit closer, but I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it very well. And uh, basically that's asking whether the chip is blank or not. So if I hit that, hit accept, it says the device is blank. So that means the EPROM eraser has done its work. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is if I just go to open, and we're in the balloon fight directory here, and I want to select a bin file type. Um, it's a binary type, so if I just go all files, and we're opening as a raw binary file, and then I'm loading um, 2B. And we'll open that up. Okay. So that's the data for ROM 2B. Now, before I write anything, what I'm actually going to do, if we go back and have a look at the chip, the window is still open. So what we're probably best off doing first, before we write any data, is we want to basically put a sticker over that, over that window so any UV light can't erase it anymore. Okay, so I just pop that over there, stick that on, so that's number 2B. Okay, so if we go back to the programmer software, um, now that I've loaded the file in, if we go to operations, there is an option to erase, program, and verify. Okay, so let's hit that, accept, and he's now writing the data to that chip. Taking a bit of time. See the lights on the uh, program are, are on. Saying it's busy. Okay, verifying it. So it says now programmed and verified, and that's and that's basically it. Um, obviously, if we go to the blank check now, because we've written some data onto it. Click accept, it will say the device is not blank, which is exactly what we expect because obviously we've written data on it. So what we basically need to do now, I'm not obviously going to go through the rest, but um, we'd need to write to each ROM, um, 1A, 1B, 1C, etc. Um, once we've done that, we can then um, put those chips on the PCB with the applicable PPUs, which was PPU three on this one, and the um, the uh, the CPU as well on both sides, and we'll have a fully working uh, balloon fight game.